Steve Norris, thanks for joining us here at the, uh, we're at the CIHT conference uh, today. Um, now, w the whole conference today is about managing a world of transport in uncertain times. Yeah. Now, you're managing or you're part of Zach Goldsmith's mayoral yeah. team for the, the obviously the, the mayoral elections yeah. in London. Um, to what extent do you think um, you know, that uncertainty around the change of mayor in London has really got to impact investment in highways? I don't know if it'll impact investment, but I do think we could be in for quite a considerable change. I mean, Zach has always been a committed environmentalist, and what mm -hmm. he's basically saying is, look, the two greatest sources of emissions are traffic and, of course, domestic um, emissions. And we've got to crack both. Uh, domestic emissions is a matter of retrofitting all of the energy-saving devices that will actually save people money. Yeah. But transport is about real change. It's not just about EVs and hybrids rather than diesel yeah. or petrol. It's also about looking at new distribution panel, uh, patterns, taking trucks maybe out of, uh, out of the daytime traffic. Mm -hmm. um, it means a lot more pedestrianization, in my mm -hmm. view. There are some people who won't like that. That, but you know, in general, that's a great way of cleaning the air. Yeah. And opportunities like going all the way, for example, from Trafalgar Square to, to Oxford Street mm. without having to encounter So, do, so do you think that this, this sector should be thinking more carefully about what the implications of a change in administration uh, at GLA is going to bring with it? Well, uh, put it this way. When, when I first stood, the, mm. the issues in London were transport, but they meant a tube, the railway, yeah. and policing. Now, they are actually housing. Mm -hmm. big change but that's of course all about transport and connectivity mm -hmm. and it's about air quality yep. wow guess what that's about mm -hmm. so i think this is whether it's Sadiq Khan or Zach Goldsmith, whoever's the new mayor, you are likely to see more radical change than you've seen so far. And I suppose this is one of the issues around uh, highways and transportation right now is the transformation of the industry to embrace new digital technologies, to em embrace data. Um, do you think this industry needs to think more carefully about how it's actually going to raise its game, change its change its its, its skill back based on, to meet that challenge? Well, well, I'm I'm on the board of Cubic uh, Corporation, mm -hmm. who run the Oyster Card system yeah. in London, but we also, of course, uh, through our subsidiary ITMS run about a quarter of London's traffic systems, yep. uh, surface traffic, and there was a deliberate reason for that. It's about being able to put surface traffic data together with public transport data mm -hmm. and sophisticated analytics to start giving you, the mm -hmm. traveller, much more confidence in the journey that you're going to make, to yep. warn you of when it's not going to be possible, to find your alternatives and so on. Now, this has been a holy grail of technology for mm -hmm. quite a long time but we're getting much, much closer to it now. Yeah. And I suspect over the next couple of mayoral terms, you'll see that yeah. evolve into something so really, yeah. really outstanding. So perhaps whereas now the focus is on concrete tunnel linings for Crossrail, uh, yeah. perhaps in the future it's going to be more about data, releasing data, uh, making more data available to do cleverer things. Yeah, I yeah. think it's exactly right. Mm. The intelligent traveller. Mm. On a wider uh, view, We've heard a lot today about uh, the challenges of getting investment uh, into local road networks. Big talk about, around uh, sub-national uh, networks to actually bring in, uh, I suppose, more investment into uh, regions, city regions around, around the UK. I mean, how's that going to help? Well, I'm, uh, you know, my view is that sub-national sub, sub bodies, uh, or city regional bodies, mm. we want to call them that, are a good way to go ahead. And the reason for that is because in these city regions, you really have to plan transport on a, you know, pan-regional yeah. basis. One of the great failings at the moment is that so many of the places outside London don't do that. Yeah. However, be careful. Uh, be, be careful what you wish for, if you like. Right. Devolution is terrific, uh, but with devolution, remember, comes responsibility. Mm -hmm. The problem is it's the man at the Treasury who still right. controls the money. <laughs> so let's see the money come yeah. into local transport authorities mm -hmm. first to give them the confidence that a regional or a sub-regional body will yeah. actually work. Because it's about, it's about financial or fiscal devolution as well as, exactly. as, well as power. It's got to be yeah. fiscal devolution along with the powers yeah. that we're going to devolve. Yeah. So I've heard you also, I think it was a conference recently, you, you, know, you were talking about the, you know, the great that we've got a lot of spending going on on a national level, but that can really undermine the spending on a, on, a, on a local level, I mean, is that still a problem? Yeah, it's a, it's a big problem for me. I mean, we've, mm -hmm. we've got some great progress being made on a five-year funding plan for mm -hmm. I was uh, England, just as we have, incidentally, on the railway. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got the National Infrastructure Commission, all of this is very good, but this is at the big, big, big project level. Yeah. You know, go to the local authorities and they will tell you that every year governments of all persuasions give them more responsibilities and less money. Yeah. And I really worry mm -hmm. about that and its implications for local transport. Right. How do we wrestle in more private finance 
into the, the transport sector. Should we be going back to some, some good old PFI schemes that, that actually bring in more investment? Well, if you, want to, if you want to get private capital in, you've got to reward that capital. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to reward it with massive percentage profits because mm -hmm. it's a long-term capital investment generally. But that means tolling. Mm -hmm. um, why do I think about tolling? Why do I think it's now inevitable? Mm -hmm. Well, because, you know, you, you're in a situation where a fuel duty is falling off a cliff. Yeah. The next car you buy will be twice mm -hmm. as fuel efficient as the one you just traded in, if not more so. Mm -hmm. And with driverless and contacted, uh, connected vehicles and so on, the EV is going to be the vehicle of the future. So, you know, um, how then are you going to replace the £30 billion that fuel duty raises? Mm -hmm classic answer, switch from taxing fuel, start taxing mobility, and in the process, open up the market for private investment in roads. You know it makes sense. <laughs> you heard it here first. Heard Thanks it a lot, Steve. Thanks for your time again. Pleasure. Thanks.